Okay, good evening, everybody. This is WRV 504 Net Control for the National GMRS Net. This net meets every Sunday at 5 p.m. Arizona time, 6 Mountain, 7 Central, 8 Eastern. To be a part of this net, you must have first checked in through one of the regional nets on the MyGMRS network or online at mygmrs.com slash nets. There is no roll call or open check-in. This is a direct to net, meaning all traffic should be coordinated by net control. If there is any emergency or priority traffic at any point, feel free to break in at any time. Also, a reminder to let the repeaters carry drop between transmissions due to the large number of repeaters tied in this evening. Does anyone have any general announcements or messages for the national net? Please give your call sign now. WRF 5506 speed, Tucson, Arizona. Just a reminder that in two weeks we don't change our time, but y'all do. Okay, that's one announcement we want to make. Daylight saving time changed for November 1st. Arizona will shift to 5 p.m. regional and 6 p.m. national. Okay, tonight's the topic for discussion. It's going to be directional antennas, pros, cons, thoughts, and recommendations. We will now begin the roundtable discussion for stations checked in for this net. If you'd like to make suggestions for future topics, please feel free, feel free to throw out any ideas during your turn. Okay, we're going to start off with Arizona. Wonder where that fire is, WQZI 371. Okay, WQZN 656, Keno in Arizona. Oh, hi, hi, Keno. Paul here in Albuquerque area. There's a big old fire uh, in my view right now, and I'm just curious where it's at. thought somebody over here might know. WQZN 656, uh, Keno in Arizona, no traffic within that, that control. Do you want to uh, speak with that gentleman? Go ahead, net control, and I'll back down. WQZI-371, sorry. Okay, no problem. Just want to make sure if there's any issue that you may have that we need to help out. Uh, just wanted to see if there's something that we could do. No issue over here. Just uh, looking at it, curiosity. Thank you. No problems. Okay, we'll move on with the net, and we're going still back with Arizona, WRCZ558, Aaron. Let's move on to WRF5506, Steve. WR5, WR5506, Tucson, Arizona operator Steve. Uh, tonight's topic, uh, Yagi versus Omni. Uh, quite frankly, you know, if you're hitting a repeater uh, through all of your traffic, um, your best bet is to get yourself a directional or Yagi antenna and shoot at that repeater's antenna, and that's going to be the strongest way you're going to talk nationally. If you're doing a talk around, um, then an Omni is great, especially... If you're in a car, you can't really have an, a Yagi in a car. Um, we're operating right now on a 5.8 Omni, but um, we don't have to have a Yagi to hit Mount Lemmon here in Tucson because it's, it's 7,000 plus uh, feet, and we're only about uh, three or four miles away from it. But um, So pros on the Yagi, if you want to hit a repeater all the time, that'd be the way to go. And pros on the Omni, if you're mobile, 
uh, or you're doing uh, talk around, uh, well, then that would be a good thing too. But uh, the Omni works great. And the uh, the Yagi is quite directional, and uh, for those of you that are far away from your repeater, get yourself a Yagi. Okay, Steve, thanks for that input. All right, we'll move to the station in California, WRJP658, Mark. Okay, let's go to KAF9292, Dave in Colorado. Nothing heard. We're going to move on to Connecticut, WRJB532, Carlos. Okay, go move into Florida, WRBW540, Anna. Okay, WRHY868, Glenn in Florida. WRHY 868, just north of Palm Beach, no traffic. Okay, Glenn, got you in here with no traffic. Going to move to our one station in Georgia, WRJJ 988, Jamie. WRJJ 988, Jamie, no traffic. Okay, got you in no traffic. Moving into Illinois, got a few stations coming in tonight from there. WQZW599, Rick. Okay, WRAL939, Vincent. KWRCM 330, Bob. Uh, good evening, Net Control. WRCM 330, Bob, here in Antioch, Illinois. Just a couple of quick thoughts on directional antennas. Um, if you have a situation where the repeaters that you're working are in one direction and you're are you receiving interference from other repeaters in the opposite or in a different direction? Consider using a directional antenna to, uh, one, propagate your signal with more power towards the repeater, but also uh, it will uh, somewhat uh, shelter you from other uh, activities on the frequency. Both Omnis and directional antennas both have their, their uses in a, in a well-designed system, but... Uh, you know, just don't think it's just for point to point. There's a lot of tools, a lot of uh, a lot of things that can be done with directional antennas. Back to the net, WRCM three three zero. Okay, Bob. Thanks for that input. Like I said, directional antenna does have its pros and cons. And like I said, in the case of an interface from other repeaters, as long as it's on that side or back that direction will definitely will help uh, cut that traffic off from that area. All right, we're going to move on to WRDL 342 Mo in Illinois. K 
Okay. We'll try that again. WRFP 921, Dave in Illinois. Nine to one, Dave in Illinois. Just checking in for the fun of it. Okay, Dave, that's what it's all about for the fun. All right, WRFR five hundred two, Artie. RFR five zero two, Artie in Naperville, Illinois. I use a three element uh, vertically polarized fluid, uh, AO1. Uh, I also built uh, a six element uh, a Yagi. Both of these are Yagi antennas. And it uses a folded dipole. And then they get the impedance match, 288 ohms to. Uh, 50 ohms, I used 120 ohm uh, 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 flex uh, balance to be able to get it to work. And it works good. The only problem is it's horizontally polarized. So I do have more snow or static um, in the horizontal. Okay, Artie, I think your timeout timer might have got you. Okay, well, I don't know where I left off, but anyway, I used two Yagi antennas. One of them is vertically polarized, three elements. The other one is a six element horizontally polarized. Uh, and I'm only transmitting on 5 watts. So uh, both of them will reach the Grundy Tire, which is 32.414 miles away from where I'm at. And uh, the six element horizontally polarized has uh, more static or snow in it than the three element. Uh, that's what I'm talking on now. Back to net control. Okay, Art, I got it all that time, and that's something that uh, you know has been you know, to bring up. If you're limited on power, a uh, directional antenna can help you get to that repeater as well. All right, Artie, all right, moving on to Justin WRFR nine one two in Illinois. This is WRFR912. I do appreciate the opportunity. However, I don't really have anything to contribute to this conversation since I've never owned a directional antenna. I'm very uh, thankful, though, to be here listening and learning about them. Uh, talked to a few people that uh, do use them and was very impressed on how far they were able to get on so few watts. But uh, other than that, I can't say much. So thank you again, and I'll just be listening. WRFR 912, back to net control. Okay, Justin, no problem. Glad to have you in. We've got WRJC 557. Ready to go by Dave or David. Uh, Dave, fine. Uh, net control. Uh, I just picked up an HYS high gain Yagi antenna off of uh, Amazon that I'm planning to play with this next set of rest days. Um, currently, I went through that whole antenna craze and came up with a quarter wave uh, that I built. Using just some copper wire and put that up 35 feet in the air, and that's what I'm using as my base, and it works great uh, coming in with very little interference. But uh, it don't help me for when I want to be in the yard and talking to my friends and 
uh, I got this uh, Yagi for that. I'm going to put that on a, a 10 foot pole that uh, can be mounted on a base and spun to uh, the direction of the repeater I want to hit. Um, but um, that's my. Okay, Dave, appreciate the input. We're going to be moving on to Clem, WRJD357. Good evening, this is uh, WRJD357. Clem here in Downers Grove, Illinois. Um, I'm also in uh, listen and learn mode tonight. I'm trying to get a, a, a base station antenna rigged on my house, which is about at least 45 miles away from the Grundy Tower, and the service is just so sketchy over there. So I don't think there's much signal in the area at all because of the valleys and the trees. Um, so um, I think Yagi is the direction I need to go. I got an Omni up there right now. Um, and, you know, if somebody uh, along the way here tonight wants to uh, shout out a model, <laughs> a brand or a model that uh, they've had good experience with, uh, that I could use in my situation, I would sure appreciate that. Anyways, uh, WRJD357, Clem here, uh, back to net control. Thank you. Okay, Clem. I know we've uh, tested around a little four element that we found on uh, eBay for around 60, 70 bucks, and it seems to work pretty good too. Uh, there's a lot of options out there, just really depending on your budget. But there may be some people out here throwing out some names and some you know, dollar amounts that they spent. Okay, we're going to move on into Indiana, uh, WRAX542, buddy. WRAX542, good evening. Thanks for doing the net. Um, I use the Yagis for a couple different things. Um, I'm actually in Greencastle, Indiana, and I've got one about 95 foot up on my tower with the TV rotor on it. So that way I can actually turn it whatever direction I want. And I use it for a base radio. And I can actually hit the Grundy Tower in Illinois, which is about 148 miles from me. And I can get into it from here um, pretty easily with that. I can't right now because I had lightning strike and it burnt the coax in two, but, uh, <laughs> well, that's another story. But uh, also, we like to use the Yaggies for doing fox hunts when we get people out there that aren't supposed to be on the system. They make it nice to be able to go out and pinpoint exactly where somebody's coming from. WRAX542. Yeah, the unfortunate part of finding the one that's causing those trouble. Uh, understand that one, buddy. All right, moving on to JWRCQ487 in Indiana. Yeah, thank you, Dirt Net Control. Yeah, I haven't really had much experience with the idea. I do own one um, for the purpose of, you know, finding those malicious uh, people out there from time to time, and so far I've been pretty lucky I haven't had to use it, but uh, I'm definitely looking to try it out. Um, that tip from that one gentleman about um, having two repeaters kind of inter interfering with you, um, I have two 700 machines, and I never even thought about using that, so I really appreciate that tip there. Thank you. WRCQ487J. Okay, moving on to Tim, WRDE566 in Indiana.
right, moving to Minnesota, WRJP706, Paul. Okay, I've got a North Carolina station in here we're moving to. Don't have a name, but the call sign WRJM554. Okay, we got one Nebraska station, WQHJ382, Rick. Laville, New Jersey, WQWN660, Jim. Good evening, sir. WQWN660, Jim in New Jersey. Uh, I do use a five-element beam uh, that boosts a 9.2 dB. It's a little five-element beam, and uh, nothing but good reports from it. Uh, for Clem, uh, who was asking about maybe name brand or whatever, it's a PC Tell which is Paul Charlie Tango Echo Lima. It's a 450 to 470 five element beam. Very good antenna and I get about 28 miles uh, simplex out the back end of the antenna. Okay, Jim, thanks and for back answer. over to you, Net Control, WQW1660. Uh, thank you for hosting this evening. Okay, Jim, no problem. Thanks for the input. Hope Clem caught on to that. You gotta give him some ideas as well. Moving into New Mexico, WRHW962, Charles. WRHW962 in New Mexico. Uh, I don't have any traffic, but I'll be learning and listening. Thank you. Okay, Charles. WRJL672, Michael in New Mexico. Okay, WRJR328, Lucky, in New Mexico. Uh, thanks very much, Net Control. Uh, I don't have any uh, comments uh, due to sort of a lack of knowledge, but I'll be standing by uh, listening and learning. Uh, thanks a bunch. Uh, back to you, Net Control. Okay, Lucky, no problem. Like I said, hopefully you get some good information out of the folks that are uh, using these directional antennas. We're going to be moving on to New York, WRFV584, Herney. Okay, WRJQ204, uh, Phil. Okay, we're going to move on to one station in Ohio, WRCP 534, 
All right, nothing heard. We're going to move down to Texas, WREZ914, Mark. Yeah, this is WREZ914. One of the things I think is cool about um, Yagi antennas is you can actually stack them on top of each other to increase your gain. Um, there's a guy out there on YouTube who has a lot of good videos about um, doing the calculations and building Yagi antennas and how to stack them in a collinear array. Um, his name is Dan Galispo. Call sign is W1GV on the ham radio. Um, that's what I've been looking at is uh, how to stack them in a collinear array using a phasing harness uh, to drive more power in a direction. Uh, which increases it over a single Yagi. Back to you, net control. Okay, Mark. Yeah, that's a good idea. I remember back in the CB days, they used to have those like stack three, four element beams side by side, co phased. It helped give some side rejection and forward. So that's a pretty good idea as well. I hadn't thought of that. All right, another Texas station, WRJQ 797. Quentin. Oh, my apologies. That's a Whiskey Romeo Juliet Kilo 797. And uh, I don't know much about directional antennas, but uh, that doesn't stop me from making a comment about it. Um, WREZ914 um, is helping me uh, research how to, uh, to possibly use one to reach out to a further repeater. That way I can use RF instead of ROIP. And that's really exciting. If I, if I lose power or Internet, I can still communicate. Over. Okay, got that. And give me a minute, folks. Have a little technical give a couple on the uh, round table call signs here. Gonna be right back with you. Okay, guys, we got a little log information uh, error going on here, so just bear with us a minute. Okay, we're back again. A little technical difficulty. Gotta love it. All right, still back in Texas. Eric WRJL six one two. Okay, WRJQ seven one seven Pat. Okay, move up the state of Washington, uh, one station up there, WRFX three eight seven Gary. Okay, moving into Wisconsin, WQJV506, Paul. WQJV506, 
506. Good evening. Check in only. No traffic. Thanks for doing the net. Back to net control. WZV 506. That's checked in, Paul. Glad to have you. WRFK 526. Rick. Okay, nothing heard. WRFT 779, Mike. Thanks, Net Control. Thanks for running the net. This is WRFT 779, Mike, up here in Wisconsin. Um, one thing about being from Wisconsin is by the time we get to the bottom of the list, anything I could have had has already been talked about. Um, picked up a few things, though, so thank you for that. One other thing I like to keep along with my Yagi's. I do own two of them, both portable units. Um, is an attenuator. Helps with what Buddy was going on about with the fox hunting. So that's pretty much all I can add to that. Back to unit control. Okay, Mike. Moving on to Ben, WRFW994. WRFW994, Ben here in Franklin. Um, I've done a lot more with cellular-based Yogi's for data backups for customers and cellular extenders, but not as much with, you know, this kind of radio or amateur radio. So. That's about all I got. Thank you for the net, and everybody have a good night. Okay, Ben. But like I said, it's at least uh, showing what they can improve as far as signal input and output as well. All right, moving on to Lewis, WRHR929. Okay, nothing heard. We're going to move on to WRJD390, Brian. WRJD390, Brian here in Concord, Wisconsin. Um, I pretty much started in on just to listen and learn, and uh, I, I ended up with a few questions, but I think being at the end of the list here, not going to really get an answer, but it's given me a direction to uh, look at my inquiries. Thanks a lot for running that. Okay, Brian, not a problem. Probably just hang around after the net, and uh, you know, there'll be some guys out here that might be able to throw a little more information, uh, you know, with you and help you out a little bit more. All right, moving on to our last station for tonight in Wisconsin, WRJH5, uh, excuse me, WRJH404. Okay, well, this concludes the National GMRS Net. We have a total of 21 check-ins this evening. If you'd like to participate in this net in the future, please remember to check in uh, into a regional net first or check in online in advance via the net's website at mygmrs.com slash nets. This net does use link repeaters throughout the United States that are part of the MyGMS network. Visit MyGMS.com for more information on this network 
its elite repeaters, and the GMRS service in general. The National GMRS Net meets every Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 6 Mountain, 7 Central, and 8 Eastern. Thanks to all who checked in and the many repeater owners that helped make this net a reality. We'll see you all next time. This is WREV 504. Return the repeater system to its regular operation and wishing everyone a good evening.